With the Great Reset's infamous phrase, you will own nothing and you will be happy, we have to talk about the fate of your home and home ownership. To catch some of you guys up to speed, the Great Reset is an agenda by the World Economic Forum to essentially consolidate all the world's wealth and debt and redistribute and reset the economy as a whole. So what does this mean if you own a home? I mean, the whole idea behind the Great Reset suggests that you won't own a home anymore and be happy. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. But how is this going to happen is the grand question. And after hours of research, I drawn up the conclusion that the people behind the Great Reset have very specific targets, particularly anyone that owns a home. And I'll tell you exactly who they're targeting in just one sec. And the following are simply my opinion based on hours of research I've done to prepare for this video. And yes, all my source materials are in the video description down below. So the first target that the Great Reset is going after are the prospective home buyers. Now, my brother Daniel has already talked about this briefly in the last video where big time Wall Street investors are buying up in key housing market area. And yes, nearly 27% of all home buying activity has been done by big time investors in the last 12 months. And that is double the amount of activity from the big time investors when compared to pre-pandemic levels. What's rather surprising, but not really that surprising, is that the Federal Reserve has been helping the BlackRock. Now, at the start of the pandemic, the Federal Reserve announced that they will purchase corporate bond ETFs and mortgage-backed securities. Now, the concept of the Fed buying corporate bond ETF is actually rather one of the first that's ever happened in the 108 years history of the Federal Reserve. And also not surprisingly, almost half the Fed's purchases went into BlackRock funds. And BlackRock is definitely not the only player involved in this. Now, by now, if you still think this is all just a conspiracy theory and just a rumor on the street, well, follow the money. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet is nearly $9 trillion and most of the mortgage-backed security purchases and corporate bond ETFs has gone to companies where they are buying homes and neighborhoods just like BlackRock. So if you've been shopping for a home or even sold your home in the last 12 to 24 months, you probably noticed a huge influx of cash buyers leading to bidding wars and ultimately increasing the perceived value of homes in your neighborhood. And of course, part of this has to do with the fact that Wall Street type investment companies are driving up the home prices up in key areas. So this of course is discouraging prospective home buyers from being able to enter the housing market, getting priced down, and of course unable to make payments on these new homes. Therefore ultimately leading these people away from owning their home and further driving them to become tenants to these corporate landlords. Now we wouldn't want that, right? No. No man. So you may have noticed that this is creating quite a bit of anxiety and at least concerns about the housing market by shorting up all the inventory and ultimately creating a panic in the market. Kind of like how they did with the toilet papers. Now the next group of people that the Great Reset is targeting are existing homeowners. And with this group, I'm gonna go and break this apart into two distinct subgroups because the Great Reset has a very different strategies with each of these subgroups. Now the first subgroup is your local mom and pop landlords. And during the COVID-19 pandemics, we saw tenants struggling to make rent payments as many of them were furloughed or completely lost their job altogether. And unfortunately, this led to many landlords unable to collect rent, some as many months until any direct assistance came their way. And as one of the options, this resulted in landlords selling their properties as they had a terrible experience with tenants not being able to pay rent throughout the pandemic. So ultimately connecting this back to the Great Reset, a lot of these landlords are selling to, well, you guessed it, Wall Street type corporate companies like BlackRock. And again, all these Wall Street type companies like BlackRock are ultimately funded by the banks, which ultimately has a tie to, well, you guessed it, the Federal Reserve. You know, the Federal Reserve is kind of like that one mom, the, the first person to start the pyramid scheme in your neighborhood, and every other mom's kind of in the bottom. But you know what, that leads me to another question. What if all these Wall Street type companies stop buying because the Fed is no longer buying corporate bonds as well as mortgage backed securities? And let's also say that the interest rates are going up through this year because it is. And what would exactly happen to all these key housing markets if both scenarios played out? This is where it gets a little scary for the other subgroup and that's our regular homeowners, especially for those with low equity on FHA loans or have taken out second mortgages. As rates increase and corporate investors stop buying, this could potentially have a huge and complete windfall on home prices on certain markets. While I don't personally anticipate another housing market crash anytime soon, I can't help but to think about and not ignore the fact that an actual crash will have a detrimental effect on the existing homeowners. Or dare I say, a manufactured housing crash. We are screwed. 
So if you're a homeowner with a little to no equity, a sudden drop in your home value can lead to a situation where you owe more than what your home value is. This is known as a negative equity situation. And back in 2008, during the Great Recession, we've seen home values drop as low as 33%. So let's just say you own a $100,000 home with a $95,000 of remaining mortgage balance. A 33% drop will definitely lead you into a negative equity situation. And back in 2008, this led to many homeowners either willingly stop making payments or alternatively, the banks would demand that the homeowners will make a lump sum payment to a point where they're at least not owing more than what the home is worth. And this might be you or you know someone in your life that has gone through the situation back in 2008. And let's be honest, we're in a very interesting situation and we have never seen an economy like this. So this is how our current situation falls into the Great Reset. If you think about it, all it takes is a perfect chaos at the right time, at the right moment, to literally cause a housing market, but not even a housing market, an economic meltdown. Whether that's through a war or a country defaulting on its loan or, I mean, dare I say, a pandemic. And historically speaking, in the last 150 years, when we saw chaos, governments stepped up to enact rules and laws that took away liberties and freedom from their own citizens. I mean, just look at the last 100 years of China. Let's say one day the housing market crashes, there's blood in the streets, there's massive tension in the geopolitical climate, and you just got the news that you lost your job. And obviously you'd be in a massive panic situation right now, but all of a sudden, you have a visitor knocking on your door. You open the door and it's a gentleman from a large Wall Street type bank that hands you a letter with an option for a rescue plan. Instead of a countrywide foreclosure wave, just like in 2008, this time the bank is offering a plan where you can continue to stay in your home for a meantime, but you have to transfer the ownership and the title of your home to the banks. And seriously guys, if you were in this situation, wouldn't you at least contemplate taking that offer? Never thought that before. And this is actually quite common where we even see small time investors do this through a strategy known as subject to acquisition, where the investor will come in, take over your mortgage payments and save you from a foreclosure. So for large corporate investors to do something similar is well within the realm of possibility. And just to give you an idea how plausible this is, the US consumer debt alone is at $15 trillion as of quarter two in 2021. And yes, that's more than what we have seen back in 2008. And all it would take is for the housing market to take the wrong step and the wrong move and all hell will break loose. It's as if the housing market is playing the squid game. So my question is, what is the threshold? I mean, how much can we take as far as the debt? When and how will this end? And to some, a great reset solution may actually sound pretty good if it means that a central governing body or a bank will come to the rescue to wipe out all of your debt at the exchange of owning nothing. And we all know that the psychological effect of inducing anxiety and fear can ultimately lead to panic, which leads to irrational decision making. Now, there is another method to which banks are doing right now to trap people and preventing people from truly owning their home. And I often call this the two mortgage trap system. And if you'd like to see how the banks are lining up their people and preventing them from owning their homes, well, this video continues with this video right here. We're gonna show you what the banks are doing to trap you and prevent you from owning your home. So friends, ward off the Great Reset and go make millions and Brazilians.